My name's John Collins. I am a freelance filmmaker and cameraman. I've been working in the industry for the last 10 years and I've been shooting with the FS7 for the last two years. I work across broadcast branded content, documentary and corporate. And I work for many household brands all across the world. The FS7 is Sony's interchangeable lens mount camera. It's got a super 35 size sensor. The ergonomics of this camera mean that it's ready to shoot with pretty much out of the box. It comes with its own handheld grip with remote control. The one thing I would say about the handle that this camera comes with though is you can't put it down with it on. You can buy various accessories that allow you to adjust the handle quickly but for me I actually tend to ditch it most of the time and use a smaller one mounted to my bars. Sony have addressed the handle on the Mark II so it's quite possible this is no longer an issue. The design of this camera means that it does come apart into small pieces which is great when you're travelling on planes and you need to break it down and get it into a pelly case with a bunch of lenses. One of my favourite features of this camera is the MI shoe. This is the media interface. Via the hot shoe, you can mount Sony's UWPD mic receiver, allowing you to wirelessly connect and power the receiver. You can then patch the audio through to any channel from one to four. The slow motion of this camera really was its talking point when it came out. Up to 180 frames in camera, and with the use of this box on the back here, you can go up to 240 to an external recorder. For me, I tend to not really go over 100 frames per second, if I'm honest. And for me, that's perfect to add a stylistic, cinematic sheen to your production. The codec on this camera is XAVCI or XAVCL. The XAVCI is a fantastic codec, 10 bit. It has lots of color information in there. The XAVCL is a lower 8 bit codec, which doesn't preserve quite as much color detail, but it does allow you to fit a lot more onto the cards than you can do with an XAVCI. The one thing to bear in mind though is that, especially when working with its most efficient strain, XAVCL, it can be very processor hungry when editing and it's not directly compatible with older workflows. There are always workarounds, but that's just something to bear in mind. You can use in the XDCA box here, shoot ProRes in camera, which can be useful if you're looking for a quick turnaround solution. Colour on this camera is Sony colour. It's maybe not quite as warm as something like the C300, but I find shooting between this, the F5, A7R, A7S, I find they match fairly easily out of the box. You have the option of shooting S-Log2 and S-Log3 as well. For me though, I do find that's kind of a very specialist thing. I think if you're shooting outside and there's lots of dynamic range, it can be really useful. But as a day-to-day -day thing, I tend to stick to the hypergammas more because that gives you a little bit of flexibility in the highlights and you still keep quite a lot of the colour information but it doesn't require quite as much work to get a nice picture. So the Sony E-mount is a really flexible lens mount. Because of the flange distance, you can fit pretty much any lens onto that, whether it's a Sony lens, a Nikon lens, or a Canon lens. It's so flexible, in fact, the new flagship Sony Venice also includes it as an option as well. For those coming from the DSLR world, you've got an ND wheel here with three preset NDs, which is very handy. The FS7 Mark II has a variable ND so that you can dial in anything from 1 to 128 of ND. So the reason you would go for this over a C200 or an FS5 is that it is 10-bit outbox. For broadcast and Netflix, the FS7 hits the mark with full 422 recording from HD to true 4K. Whilst the FS5 can record 422 HD, it can't shoot true 4K, which could be an issue if production requirements like Netflix are full 4K. Another issue with the FS5 and C200 is it's not possible to jam sync timecode, which if you're working on a multi-camera shoot is essential. Another great feature of this camera is its sense crop mode, which means you can double the focal length of your lenses. One issue I have with that though is you have to go through the Sony menu, which is not the easiest menu to navigate through. What I'd love on the FS7 Mark III is to have that at the press of a button. So in summary, I don't think you can get much more bang for your buck if I'm honest. It's not the most well-built of Sony cameras and it's not got all the bells and whistles of an F5, but you know, it could pretty much do everything that its bigger brother can. I'd love to be able to shoot 100 FPS in 4K with it, but until the FS7 Mark III comes out, I think I can wait. Mm -hmm.